I am rank 130 in the world right now. 1,461 MMR. And I did it all with this uh, Kathari deck right here. I'm going to leave a link to the list as well if you would like in the uh, description to want to go check it out. You can actually copy the, the list. You can copy the code and you can import it into the game pretty easily. But yeah, just going to go one by one through these cards, explain how the deck works, go through the leader as well. So starting off with Cypius himself, the Paragon or leader. Um, he has a muster ability. If you play him as a 5-3-3, three, three, then you trigger all the muster abilities that you have activated this game with targets chosen randomly. So this ability is pretty nice, but uh, you don't even need it like half the time. You usually just use his passive ability, which I'll go over right now at the bottom here. After you bank a unit, not an effect, not, a, not an upgrade, not a relic, but after you bank a unit card, then you create a 0-1 Cypius as a Jutant. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and then if you already own one, if you already control one, then that unit gains plus one plus zero instead. So the whole thing is that you want to be making these tokens because tokens are so good for the deck. You want to go really wide generally. And you also have a, a relic that works really well with these zero ones that you generate. So starting off with the relic that we have right here, we only run one relic. We run three copies of it. Um, it's, it is like the absolute best card that you could get on turn one. Um, it costs one energy. And you can activate the relic to destroy a target-friendly unit to gain one energy. And you can even activate it twice in a turn. But if you activate it twice in a turn, then you have to destroy it. I guess destroy it. So the whole combo is you get to uh, get the zero one just by banking a unit with your, with your Paragon. And then if you have the relic out, then you can just destroy that and get another energy. So you're banking one to get an energy, and then you're getting another energy because you're killing it. So you get two energy per turn. It's super duper strong. You can even do it on turn one, which I generally do, where I bank a unit, I play the relic, I pop the zero one, and then I play a one drop, which does end up using a lot of cards in your hand, but it's generally worth it just to get the chamber down and to get a unit on the board as soon as possible. Uh, we have quite a few cards for turn one as well. Uh, mostly every single deck in the game is running Mercenary Gunslinger. This is really no surprise. Just a very strong one drop. Helps you deal with the early stuff and... Uh, is another unit to bank if you really want to um but yeah pretty much nothing else to say about that card then we have reliant gamma um who i think looks like donald trump but it's a a two one and at the start of your turn if you control another clone uh this unit gains plus one plus one so you're always gonna have a clone pretty much because the zero ones are clones themselves uh and basically like every card in this deck is a clone so one thing that you could do if you don't have the chamber or if you just have uh, Reliant Gamma and you don't have another uh, great play besides this on turn one, uh, is you could just bank a unit, play Reliant Gamma, and then if it lives till the next turn, then it becomes a 3-2. That's pretty strong. But like I said, a lot of people are playing Gunslinger in their deck, understandably. So uh, they'll usually have it as an answer, but if this is your best play on turn one, it's usually pretty good as well. And then if they're killing this and they're not killing the zero ones, then you can maybe uh, pump the zero one uh, to a one one, or you can use it as chamber fodder for turn two. Next up, we have the Valrusi Striker. Uh, this card is just a solid one drop yet again. It is a clone too. Um, and yeah, it's just, uh, it can get powered up if you have multiple strikers on the board, but usually that's not the case. Usually you just play it just as a two, two, and you're pretty happy with it. Going into the two drops, we have Cunning Scypion, who is uh, one of the best cards in the game right here. Uh, it's a two cost, one, it's a one, two. And then at the end of your turn, you create a one, one token clone, pretty much. And that clone is really essential just for going, you want to go wide on the board and you're going to see why there's there card, there's cards that power up these tokens. And uh, you can use these tokens, of course, with a chamber as well. But yeah, just going as wide as possible. Not a lot of decks can deal with that. Uh, and then being able to buff all that stuff up and go face. That's usually the game plan. So one card that does buff that up is going to be the standard bearer card right here, which is when another friendly clone enters the field, it gains plus one, plus one. So if you have this guy down on the board already, and then you play Cunning Scypion, uh, this card is a clone itself, and then it summons a 1-1, one, one, which is also a clone. So you get a lot of value out of this card right here. And this card, if they don't deal with it, uh, it snowballs pretty hard. Next up, we have Magna, 
This is a legendary card that was actually gifted to me. Um, but not everyone's going to have it. It's not completely necessary, but this card is very, very strong for the deck. This is a 3 mana, 3-2. Three, and it has a muster ability. Uh, so when you play it, you get the ability to choose one. You either deal damage equal to this unit's attack to a target enemy unit. You could draw a card, or you could deal one to their fate. That's what the enemy means. But if a Cathari unit was destroyed on the enemy's last turn, then you do all three instead. And a uh, Cathari unit is anything that's specific to the class, which is all these units that you see right here, uh, pretty much. Like, there's a couple cards that are not Cathari units, but except for, like, the Mercenary Gunslingers and the Black Market Fixers, everything else is a Cathari unit. And you also get the uh, uh, Cathari unit also counts like a token as well. Whether it's from your Paragon ability or from uh, like Cunning Scythian as well. So it's very easy to get this thing activated. And even if it's not activated, it's still just super strong. Usually you do the uh, the unit attack. You do the damage equal to the attack to something. And something to keep in mind for that is that you can actually power this up before it goes off. So what I mean is if you have the bearer on the field already, then when Magna enters the field, it gains the plus one, plus one, and then it will deal the damage equal to the attack. So it can actually deal four attacks. Sometimes it can deal five, depending on what your board's looking like. But this is a really strong card, especially with those other cards powering it up. Next up, we have debatably like the strongest card in the deck right here, the Asian Subjugate. This is a 3-3-4-3. Three, three, three. Um, and after a friendly clone enters the field, target unit gains plus one, plus one, and you waste the top part of your deck. So you put it right into your trash. Um, but that doesn't really matter too much, but I'll get into why that does matter a little bit, that part. Um, but for the most part, it's all about getting that plus one, plus one, which is kind of very similar to the bearer giving plus one, plus one to a unit. But this way, you get to actually target what gets the plus one, and you can actually target itself, or you can target something else. So it just allows you, this card is the snowball card. If this card lives, you basically just win the game. That's generally how it goes, because... Uh, then you're able to really just pop off with a bunch of other cards, uh, like Cunning Scythian, or like some other cards that you're about to see that summon a lot of stuff. Next up, I'll, I'll go into the, the four costs that actually synergizes with that subjugate. So after this card enters your waste from anywhere other than the field, so whether it's from the top of your deck, from the Asian subjugate, or from uh, a card that we'll go over in a little bit, uh, you get a 1-1 one, one token on the board. So that is, uh, that is a potential payoff from wasting the top card of your deck. Um, is that you can waste this and then you get another 1-1. One, one. And this card also you can just play it as a 4 mana 3-4. Which has the muster or battle cry or whatever. Uh, to draw a card when you play it. And playing cards like this. Playing all these muster abilities. Remember that uh, these muster abilities will actually activate again when you play your Scythius when you actually play your leader so if I play these guys that draw me a card or if I play a card like Magna I will get these abilities again but something to note with Magna specifically is that even if you got all three abilities whatever like however whatever ability you actually got from this from this guy when you play it or this girl um when you use Scythius uh it'll actually just use it'll actually just select a random one one random effect from Magna and use it uh there's no way to control it it's just random but generally it's pretty good but yeah we have these formaticians exalts which are just like for consistency in the deck it's usually the card that you want to put into your bank but uh it really could help you out with that draw ability setting up your stipeus to get you back into the game or just if you waste it from the top of your deck it's pretty sweet then we have another good muster ability this card is used in most decks out there black market fixer one of the strongest cards in the game uh just being able to pop a two or less cost uh unit and you get a two two on the board and this does work again yet again the muster ability works so well with the leader so definitely recommend this card and then the uh, last unit that we see right here is the druthian exorator this is the card that pumps all your clones that are on the board already by plus two plus one super strong buffs um yeah, it's just very necessary. You could also, if you don't have this card, you could run Crew Boss. He does very well as well. He just pumps plus one, plus one. And he has an extra attack on him. But he's not a Cathar unit. And yeah, it's just a straight up worse card. But this is the better version. And 
something to note. Let's say let's say that I have a 1-1 one, one on the board, and then I play uh Exorator onto the board. So now it's a 3-2. Let's say I trade that 3-2 into a unit that deals one damage to me. So now it's a 3-1. Because it's getting pumped by the Exorator still. Now if they destroy my Exorator, if my opponent destroys the Exorator, my unit actually loses that plus two plus one, and it actually will die because it's at that one hp now so that's just something kind of unique to this game that's not generally how it works in card games but that is how it works in parallel so you do have to be wary of these buffs so usually you want to cash in on these buffs as much as possible um but yeah this card's really strong uh now just getting into the effects right here uh psa launcher this is one of the strongest cards in the game it's just a very basic card but it's one mana for two damage to a target unit it can't go face of course but just one for two is generally strong especially while we have a very limited card pool in parallel so this is a very good card we run three of it in the deck for sure and i have two unnatural selections which this card is like okay not really anything crazy but once again this is a budget build uh because i just don't own all the cards whether it's nft or just free version of the cards i just don't own any uh all the cards so i would be running some other legendaries in here but i only have the one legendary so running on natural selection which is okay honestly uh you pay two you discard a card and then you draw a card and if the card that you drew was a unit then you create a one one token and you draw another card so you could go plus a card and a one one you usually do considering how many units you have in the deck but not always um but a fun little combo to do with this is to use this uh to discard the formatician's exalt which will then activate this so then you get a one one from this since it's entering your waste from your hand uh and then hopefully you get another one one from this card so it's not too bad the card but uh yeah i run two of them just because it's kind of the only thing i have seeing triple i run three of this card in this deck should go down to two but uh, once again i don't have a perfect list here uh it's kind of a budget list but seeing triple is a very good card creates three one one haunts one one defenders um which are also clones and Cathar units so they get buffs from all your stuff and uh yeah it's a very very powerful follow-up to like either the bearer or the asian subjugate and then it protects those cards as well since they have defender so you could decide what you actually want to uh defend attacks with you could decide what attacks you want to defend where so you could buff them up in certain kind of ways and then play with uh, how your opponent is going to attack you get to control basically how your opponent attacks and last but not least, I have two copies of Synchronicity in the deck. Um, I really like this card, especially against Shroud. Um, you have to play a copy. For four energy, you, pay, you play a copy of the target non-Paragon unit. So not you can't copy a leader. But you can copy everything else. So you could do it on your own stuff. You could get, if you have like a pumped up subjugate or whatever, like you could get multiple subjugates. You get multiple whatever you want, really. Another Exorator. The uh, possibilities are endless, but how it works is you target a card, you get the card into your hand, and then you play it for free. So you actually get the muster ability of whatever card that you're playing, and uh, you can use it on your opponent's units as well. So a fun thing to do is there's a card, there's a 4-4 card, I think it's named Honored Steward. I'll put a picture on the uh, on the, on the screen right here. Um, the Shroud plays, it's a very popular 4-drop um, that targets a card and banishes the card until this card leaves the field and then they get it back but if you synchronicity that card then you get to banish their card to banish your card but then since you're not playing shroud then you don't have a singularity zone so then they actually don't get it back it's, it's a whole thing it's a little advanced but this card is really good especially against shroud and uh you could run this or you could run i would run maybe like one and one of like this plus genetic correction which is also a very uh good card with this deck uh, but yeah this is my budget list that's gotten me into top 200 top 150 uh it's doing very well and like i was saying if if you have the legendaries i would definitely consider running uh wong in here wong is super strong uh i would play ozo and i would also play astel's glaive those are like the most powerful legendaries at the moment so if you have them i would play them but yeah this is my list Hope you guys enjoyed the explanation right there. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. I have my referral link in the description as well. If you haven't downloaded the game yet and you're thinking about it, uh, it helps me and it helps you. 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, if you want more deck guides like this, let me know. Let me know which uh, deck you want me to cover, and I'll go over it. But thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. It's your boy.